Welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. I am your host, Cardin Ellis, with Cody the Oracle. Hey, everybody. And today we're going to look at the performance of some of the candidates we've been following. Actually, a lot of people endorsed by Humanity Forward and by Andrew Yang showed some pretty solid numbers yesterday. Many of them didn't lose, but they are oh, sorry. Well, many of them didn't lose. Uh, many of them did lose or many of them got enough to make it on to the next phase. OK, either way. The numbers are actually pretty promising. Cody, you're, you're, you're scowling. Did I say something wrong already? What? Well, scowling. There's many as in one. We're going to be talking yeah. about two candidates in particular today, a couple people we've actually talked to recently. That's one thing. So I just, we're, we're focusing on a couple individual things here, but there's various reasons why I want to get into Um, Because yesterday, there was a, trust me, not very w widely publicized election, unfortunately, in the organs first. Uh, it took me a while to actually find the actual Posted results. However, you'll know, you might recognize the second name there, Heidi Briones, who's a friend of the show. She's actually been a friend of the show for a long time. And she, I don't know the exact day, I think it was about eight weeks ago, she actually threw her hat in, or a little bit longer than that, yeah. to run for Congress. It was so Oregon run. won, yeah. But the big thing here was, she was one of a couple of candidates we talked to, who won, first of all, was actually officially endorsed by Humanity Forward, which I remember like when we first started doing interviews with a bunch of the candidates, I, used to, I was asking every single candidate, I think we only got to a few. We're still going to try to work on a few more, but I know the election's starting to roll out now. But I always ask them, like, has Humanity Forward reached out to you? Like, have they talked? Because that was one of the things they talked about, and I wanted to see these candidates, especially because Heidi and another one we're going to talk about in a minute here, uh, Mr. David Kim, both running on platforms that, well, they're not mirrors of what Andrew Yang ran on, were, like, motivated to run and get into this thing mostly by following along with Andrew Yang and have adopted yeah. some of his big things. I mean, it is kind of a microcosm of the... How do I describe it? It's actually a game I was playing. They had Andrew Yang, where you, you run to get elected, and they, they called his plan his plan a new Yangism. So whatever you want to call okay, it, right? Yeah. But this would be the fundamental kind of forming of it. Um, and it's interesting to see what starts. So anyway, that was, that was a, a little bit long winded, but I just wanted to kind of highlight who we're talking about here and why. Uh, like I said, somebody who was kind of I don't want to say pushed into running, but really when we spoke with her, said like yeah, like following Andrew Yang and seeing what was going on with politics, and just kind of. Going from politically less engaged and motivated as before to, wait a minute, I should run and do something from following Andrew Yang has been a thread we've seen I want to highlight. But here we go. Last night, we got some results. Spoke yeah. with a few people who haven't, who, haven't, who haven't had the elections last night. So last night, um, Susan Bonamici, I believe, is a multiple-term incumbent yeah. um, who is... I. I think she does her job very well for the region with the local interests, I guess you could say. No flame and just hey, yeah. people stay elected for those reasons. Uh, she won. However, you know, the second place was Heidi Briones with, I believe at this point, was 67% of the votes reporting. Updated 40, 46 minutes ago, so pretty recently. Not 67, 6. 7, right? No, 67% reporting. Oh, 67% reporting. Yeah, okay, I thought I, you were I, saying I of the I votes. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't say that clearly. I apologize. Yeah. yeah, but with a little over half of the, the votes reporting, we see that she has about 6.3 thousand votes. If you can see my look at nine, six. Now, before you continue into the rest of this data, I do want to bring something up. You know, a lot of people on Twitter were, were acting disappointed, like, oh, so-and-so uh, uh, got smoked or, or didn't get a lot of votes, or, or they, they, they get somehow down when they see those kind of numbers. But that's actually extremely impressive. That's more than libertarians and Green Party people get. You know what I'm saying? And in any other functioning society, that would be a legitimate parliamentary party. You know what I'm saying? Like, like holding a 6 to 12% vote would be a legitimate parliamentary party in any other country out there. And for, for me, as, as a new movement, looking at this idea of people endorsing UBI as part of their platform as for lack of a better term, the UBI party, okay? Um, pummeling 6% away from your party's can top candidate is a very impress impressive feat that I've seen people spend a million dollars on and not get half of that. Well, I mean, no offense to this individual, yeah. but um, just doing a little bit of looking around. Okay. Uh, the Ricky Barras individual, I don't think has totaled that many votes in both of his runs for this seat. No offense to this guy. I'm just saying that like, <laughs> exactly. like there's this sense that like, oh, someone got like most of the votes. Like, yeah, dude, people actually do get one to zero percent. It does happen and it's sad. Yeah. But to get into a larger point, what's really interesting to me about this and what kind of fascinating was, I guess, kind of what you were saying a second ago, right? The idea that this is in a non two party system, like the formings of a fringe, smaller, but growing political party yeah. with that percent. Now, I'm not going to say this extrapolate too far, but it was interesting to see. I mean, this was one of the earlier actual hard, tangible numbers we've gotten since... Actually, I think it would be the first one we've gotten since Humanity Forward officially started kind of throwing the weight a little bit behind candidates and endorsing them. 
now, you know, very shortly before the election. And I thought it was really funny. I'll see if I can pull it up for you guys. It had the list of endorsements, right? For yeah. each candidate. And when you click on the endorsement for Heidi, it was like Andrew Yang, Marianne Williamson, a couple of other like big names. And you click on the uh, the endorsements for the other candidate, and it was like seven labor unions. And it's like, yeah, well, the labor unions are going to yeah. find a way to win out every <laughs> single time, unfortunately. But that was really yeah. cool. But there's another election I wanted to talk on. This one, we're going back a little bit to Super Tuesday. But I wanted to highlight it because it's actually another, uh, another candidate who, again, who is, I don't, was already involved politically a little bit, I believe, when we talked with him before kind of really following the Yang movement, getting into it. But really kind of one of the things that Upspur's run for Congress, I believe he said, was really seeing what was going on in politics and just kind of, I don't want to say getting motivated by, but I'm just like there was people legitimately getting inspired by what Andrew Yang did. And I think it's from yeah. looking at the numbers. We're going back a little bit here. I think this was actually on March 3rd, going back okay. to the earlier this year, where David Kim ran in his primary. Now, in California, we have a top two primary. Yeah, it's which the means, jungle primary. Yeah, which, jungle. Do you know why they call it the jungle primary? It makes no sense to me. Well, no, because it used to be that the top person of every party came yeah. together for the general. But then you'd have like four con candidates in a general uh, because there'd be four major parties. And then people were complaining, though, it's not fair that the Green Party guy that gets two votes is actually up against me. They got 10,000. And both parties, this was a bipartisan failure in yeah, California. Well, you know, they sold them out, didn't they? Yeah, both parties said, oh, we want to switch to a jungle primary, which only made it so that in the Republican districts, there's two Republicans on the top of the ballot. And then in the Democrat districts, there's two Democrats in the top of the ballot. And now nobody ever has any chance of switching any seats any different color as much as they did before so we're actually probably going to get rid of in the next decade but yes in california you can literally have two democrats at the top of a ballot yeah which well, i mean i guess to kind of like highlight the district right you can look and see that there was what a little over 20 something thousand votes cast maybe 27 000. i i can't yeah. do math but you'll notice that all but three thousand are for a democrat because there's somewhere right Point being, yeah. though, here's the thing. Running against other people, you'll notice David Kim, again, running on a very Andrew Yang-inspired, not centric, but UBI's focal point. I believe he's more on Medicare for All than Andrew Yang was, because that was actually something Andrew Yang got... Yeah, I had to chastise David Kim well, for his not, Medicare but, for All who, stance. No, but, <laughs> no, but what I mean, is, that was something Andrew Yang did get pushed back on a lot, was not big yeah. of it. So that's one point he differs, my only point, but still. For recognizing it wouldn't yeah, work. Again, yeah. though, somebody who was eventually inspired, <laughs> and inspired, eventually endorsed by Humanity Forward, we yeah. can see he's actually going to be on the general ballot coming up in November. Yeah. And really, I mean, 9,000 vote difference to make up in a few months, considering he had started not too long before the primary in the first place. I believe he, like I said, he, he was in much more local politics originally, doing some like community local stuff, and he just couldn't get anyone else to run for this seat, so he said he'd run for it. I believe was what he said. Yeah. Just kind of not too far before, and we'll see. But it is kind of fascinating to see what I, I'm hoping. It was the thing I've been hoping since Humanity Forward got announced. If you go back and watch the video we did when Humanity Forward got leaked, or for whatever reason, the website just went live a couple days early. I don't know why. Uh, and they took it down shortly after, but it went live. People had seen it. Was I thought mode kind of curating and growing this would have been the greatest thing Anne Jane could do with the rest of it. Now, current events kind of shifted that up, and Humanity Forward became more of a relief organization in a lot of ways, which yeah. is fine. But it was always fascinating to me looking around because, dude, there are so many elections out there that, and in a way, I think you can credit um, AOC for this, which she did. Yeah. Where people are like, you, if you like just look at specific districts around the country, for example, we talked a lot about the 25th district. What happened there? There is a lot of weird specific stuff that can happen in the dominant chain that can make seats open up you wouldn't expect. Yeah. And it's important to have people for them pushing them. I mean, David Kim could very easily be, I think it's uh, Gomez. I forgot the guy's first name. I apologize. Oh, it's Jimmy Gomez. Yeah. I, I wanted to say the failure was wrong, right? But he could very easily win that seat later on. I mean, Heidi Brown has ran for just a, f a few months against a big-time establishment, not establishment, but someone who's a multiple-time incumbent and was the closest runner-up, you know, by thin margins. But yeah. still, point being is there are people going out running on what Andrew Yang kind of was talking about yeah, and getting tangible numbers and results now. I mean, the Andrew Yang campaign isn't really, like, his campaign's over, but, like, he was running to be on the ballot in 2020, right? Like, you can't even really say it's the legacy of Andrew Yang's 2020 run because we haven't even had a 2020 vote yet. Yeah. So it's interesting to see this early on what's going on. Now, what will this be? There's a future where this is it. This is the best it ever looks for anyone running on Yang platforms. And from here on out, it's worse forever, right? But I don't know, man. I think this is probably where it might start. And 
if people stay with it, who knows? But what AMJ is talking about, how so much of it has come. I mean, Mark Cuban was talking about a very interesting. Mark Cuban wanted to do like bi-weekly UBI. That yeah. was like use it or lose it. Uh, there, which was interesting. But yeah. I'll, I'll, because of current events, everything AMJ talked about, mass unemployment, job loss, businesses closing, automation, just got accelerated his problems. Like yeah. his platform was built around addressing problems that we're having now sooner than we thought. And I think that's really something to keep an eye on. Again, this was a very little publicized kind of small election incumbent wins with an 80% margin. Why would anyone be talking about it? Right. But it's interesting to think there's 6.3 thousand people in the first district of Oregon that were kind of like, you know what? We're on, we're on board with this stuff. And that's in a completely uphill battle though. I'm really curious to see how well or how differently Oregon one would look had volunteers been able to go door to door and had coronavirus not well, been happening. Exactly. This was like a, this you know, one of the most difficult elections. You run. Yeah. I take a lot of heart from that. Six percent is actually really good for um, a candidate that's not at all part of the establishment. Uh, th- that's pretty unheard of. I mean, I helped a guy once that was running under the same party but wasn't an establishment person. And he broke like 3% and it was amazing because people were expecting him to be in like, you know, zero point whatever digits. Okay. Okay. So um, to me, I look at this and I think, great. This is awesome. I mean, this, this will have surprised people in the political know. Like... All of these candidates that have gone on to the next step and won or the ones that have actually moved on to the next phase, I can guarantee you they're not thinking, oh, we got this in the bag. They're thinking, how on earth did this person get 6%? You know what I'm saying? Like, we obviously don't have this on lockdown. How on earth did David Kim get his double digits in percentage? You know, these people are not interested in anything other than resounding and complete victory. And it's just like a little hole in the dike. It's just like a little crack in the hole of a ship. You know what I'm saying? It widens super quickly until all of a sudden, boom, you got a disaster on your hands. And that's the way that they view their percentage numbers. I I mean, I just think the the point of... People still have an eye on Andrew Yang. He's talked about a lot, especially because he did kind of launch himself into being a media figure after running, so it was just names in the conversation. But yeah, people are going to be wondering, so this Andrew Yang guy, he didn't win, but wh- what is he doing? Like, who is he endorsing? How are they doing? It's, oh, okay. They're getting results. I, yeah. I, I agree. It's just, it's it, it's interesting to see. I mean, we've, we've talked with a couple of candidates. A lot of people, I think there's, God, how many people are running, like, signed up for, like, the UBI caucus? I forgot. I, for local elections, we're talking about Jermaine Johnson. I believe he was the first person who was endorsed by Andrew Yang, I believe. Um, it's Manity Forward. Either way, I'm not going to get into that kind of stuff. Um, point being, it is really interesting, and I'm monitoring a lot of these numbers when they come back. So I just want to see. I wa- I'm going to be curious. I'm going to tally up when it's all said and done. Candidates endorsed by Humanity Forward, how many votes did they get when it's all said and done? At the end of 2020, and just look at that number. It's interesting because that'll be small little regions. It's not like a national number. It'd be from you know little places then combined nationally. But it'd be interesting to see the regional influence in numbers that Andrew Yang would have by the end of it. Because, dude, I have to admit, I don't. And this is one reason why I bring it up. People say, "Oh, he's why yammer to Andrew Yang for 13 minutes about nothing." The reason I bring it up, dude, I don't know anybody running on what Amy Klobuchar was talking about. I don't know anyone running on what Kamala Harris was talking about, like unique to Kamala, right? Like. There was 20 people who ran for president with allegedly different platforms. I just don't see people that are like, wow, I after seeing Pete Buttigieg run on basically nothing. Yeah. Anything for anyone who wants it, I guess, is basically Pete Buttigieg. If you want it, you can have it, sure. It was basically his stance on things. Yeah. Who's running for office because of Pete Buttigieg's amazing, ah, I guess, whatever. He stormed the castle. Yeah, like, what did he do? <laughs> but you're seeing people that are like, wow, Andrew Jane got me thinking about these specific platforms ideas ubi mainly and are running for office because of well, it shows the that's au- unique that's interesting yeah and it shows the authenticity of the original movement and the actual strength of the idea yeah because ideas that don't have that kind of strength don't propagate and so um anyway we'd love to know what you guys think uh below if any of you guys were in any of these districts and had a chance to participate please let us know um also make sure that you guys follow us on twitter at psp radio one this is problem solver politics we'll see you guys in the next video